In this presentation, I'm going to discuss how we get a picture for the region of integration of a double integral. It's necessary to have a good understanding of this topic in order to do things such as swapping the order of integration or swapping back and forth between Cartesian and polar coordinates. These two topics I just mentioned will be the subject of later screencasts. Since here I'm only concerned with the region of integration, that means I'll be focusing on the limits on the integrals. I don't really care what the integrand is in, is in these integrals, so I'm going to just call it f of x and y all the time. Let's start with a very simple one in which the limits of integration are all constant. I'll write an example down now. Here it is. It's an integral within another integral. We need to be clear about which integral symbol goes with which d. It's straightforward enough. The outer ones go together and the inner ones go together. We can emphasize that by maybe drawing some brackets around the inner one. We can now see very clearly that the x limits are going to run from 1 to 4 while inside there is another integral which is a y integral and its limits run from 2 to 3. I want to try and picture this region now. Let's start by drawing a frame. 2 to 3 and 1 to 4 are all going to be in the top right hand quadrant, the first quadrant, so we only need to draw that part of the graph. OK, that's a start. Now the outer integral, it's x. x runs from 1 to 4, so we'd better mark 1 and 4 on the x-axis. While we're doing the x integration from 1 to 4, Inside that, we have a y integration running from 2 to 3. So we'd better mark 2 and 3 on the y-axis. Now I want us to talk through in our heads how we visualize this integral. It's best to focus on the outer one. We say for each x between 1 and 4, so in other words we move to the right from 1 to 4, y takes on values starting at the lower limit of 2, and finishing at 3. Let's draw a line at that lower limit of y between x equals 1 and x equals 4. So that's the span of the x values at y equals 2. But while we're doing the integration for each of those x values y rises from 2 as high as 3. So what we need to do is put on a ceiling at 3 and then connect up the sides and we'll have our region of integration. I think it's clear enough that this region is a rectangle. It's a rectangle because all the integration limits are constant. Quite often we refer to the region as R, so I've indicated it that way. Because it's a very important concept when we come to reverse the order of integration, I just want to emphasize and reiterate the way we describe this integral. We said for each x from 1 as far as 4, y rises from 2 as far as 3. You might like to think about that description and ask yourself whether it has a bearing on the process of reversing the order of integration. As I said before, we'll talk about that in further screencasts. What I want to do here next though is to look at a slightly more complicated region in which not all of the integration limits are constant. I've drawn one of these on the next page. Let's do our red bracketing again to distinguish the outer from the inner integral. It's clear here that the outer integral is the x1 and x runs from 0 to 1. Within that range from 0 to 1, the y values run from y equals x squared as far as y equals x. So how do we start to draw this region? Well, we'd better mark 0 to 1 on the x-axis and then we'll need to draw the curves y equals x squared and y equals x. Let's start that process. Here are the axes with 1 marked on. Let's first of all draw the curve y equals x. That's just a, stroping, a sloping straight line with gradient 1. Here it is. I've stopped drawing it at the point where x is 1, which is the end of the x integration. We now need to put on, also, y equals x squared. 
Remember that between 0 and 1, x squared is smaller than x. So we'll get a parabola which starts at the origin and rises up to meet the curve we've already got at the point 1, 1. Here it is. Now let's just describe that integration again. For each x from 0 to the right as far as 1, y starts on the curve y equals x squared and finishes on the curve y equals x. Hence the region of integration is just that in between the two curves. I'll shade it in now. I've called it R again. Let's keep going and do another one. There's one ready on the next page. Look at what's different about this one. This time the outer integral is the y integral and y is running from 0 to 1. Let's mark those points on a y-axis. Here it is. Now this time the inner integral is the x1. Its lower limit is when x equals y. That's easy enough to draw. You might not be quite used to thinking of x as a function of y, but x equals y is the same as y equals x, so it's just the same straight line we had before. OK, there it is. Now what about the other one? x equals root y. Let's write that down and see if we can picture it by changing it to y as a function of x. We could square both sides to get rid of the square root of y. That'll just make y equals x squared again. It's the same parabola we had before. It's just that x equals root y looked a bit different, but it's the same curve. Let's put it on. OK, that looks like the diagram's finished. We need to shade the region. I expect you can guess that it's the same region as before, but let's describe it. From each value of y starting at 0 and going up to 1, our x starts at y, that's on the straight line, and heads to the right as far as root y. Clearly that is the same region, but we're viewing it in a slightly different way now. In fact, in a reverse order. Let's shade it in now. What I just said about the reverse order should be starting to give you some thoughts about how we might go about reversing the order of integration. I keep going on about that here because it's an important concept and it does arise from what we're doing here. But I'm not actually going to do such an example yet. Instead, I'm going to move on to one further example. Again, I've prepared it on the next page. We're back to the old order again. x outside runs from 0 to log 8, while y runs from the curve y equals e to the x as high as the constant value y equals 8. We'll need to mark on those two curves, y equals e to the x and the straight line y equals 8. Let's do that now. Here are the axes with the curve y equals 8 marked on. I've also got to put on y equals e to the x. Remember e to the power 0 is 1. So we need to draw an exponential curve starting at e to the 0 and going as far as y equals 8. We can probably guess what the region of integration is now. It looks like it ought to be the region enclosed between the exponential curve and the top limit y equals 8. We'd better just think about that x value though, at the place where the curves meet. At the place where the curves meet, we have e to the x must be equal to 8. If we call that point p, we can say that at p, e to the x equals 8. If we take logs both sides, we'll get x equals log of 8. We can mark that on the x-axis, and of course it should be no surprise that that's turned out to be the top limit on the x integration. So now we describe the region to ourselves. For every x starting at x equals 0 and finishing at x equals log 8, so that's from the left to the right, our y values start on the exponential curve and rise as far as the constant curve y equals 8. Hence it's the upper part of the enclosed region. I'll shade it in now. One last one. 
I'll do this a bit quicker because you should be getting the hang of it. It's on the next page. Here it is. Again the outer integral is the x1 and x runs from 0 to pi. Between 0 and pi the y variable starts at 0 and finishes at sine x. We need to draw on the curve y equals sine x. So finally for every x running from the left starting at 0 as far as pi on the right y rises from the x-axis at 0 and finishes at the curve sine x. It's just the enclosed region under the sine curve. I'll shade it in and then we'll call that a day. Here it is. If you've understood all this you should be well prepared for later screencasts in particular those in which we reverse the order of integration.